EU sanctions are properly called restrictive measures and these are measures which are put in place by law by the European Union and its member states which target either a country outside the EU such as Russia, Iran, North Korea or individuals wherever they are in the world who are suspected of involvement in terrorism. Sanctions can be effective but sometimes to measure that effect is very very difficult. They can often take a very long time to have any effect. So for example in the case of Myanmar it's only recently that the sanctions regime has been lifted after being in place for many many years. So it can be difficult to pinpoint whether it is the sanctions themselves that have promoted change or the danger is sometimes that they can affect people in the country who they were not intended to, I, for example, the poorest in society. Sometimes the threat of sanctions is enough to change uh, the behaviour of a state, for example, if it's being acting in a threatening way. But pinpointing exactly the reasons for doing so can be very difficult. The Prime Minister David Cameron has been very clear that, particularly in the case of Russia and Iran, the UK pushed for sanctions. So we can see that there is a synergy between UK and EU foreign policy. If the UK left the European Union, the UK would be able to place sanctions itself, but it would be far less effective as, as one member state than 28. I question the true motivation behind the reasons which the UK decides to implement sanctions. So I believe there are both economic and political reasons for carrying out these sanctions. And whilst many members of the public uh, might agree with some of the political motivation, a lot of the time we would fundamentally disagree with the economic reasons for us to carry forward these sanctions. And this is something which we are um, not informed about. So I think the sanctions of Europe are quite effective uh, outside Europe. If we think about Russia, for instance, we can say that the sanctions can make different countries of Europe uh, work together and speak with a single voice over these issues. The impact of sanctions on Russia, the Russians and the Russian economy, well, profound impact. It's, uh, I think it's given Russia the impetus to do things on its own. And I think ultimately this is probably, you know, it, it's a very hard period for Russia, undoubtedly. You know, many people, many Russian businesses would have suffered from lack of access to funds, expertise, all the things that, that normal economies need to function. However, if we take the longer term view, I think what will come out of this will be a a more streamlined Russia with a more responsive economy. Largely, I think the Russian people are hugely resilient. Um, they've been through far worse than this. And I think if you look at the crash of 98, the major economic crash in 98, 1998, far worse than what we're looking at now. And they survived. If the UK left the European Union, then it would be able to place sanctions as it decided on any country around the world. But it's very clear that as a member state you get a far more effective foreign policy measure of sanctions on a third country than the UK acting alone.